After seeing the popularity with Infinite Color Panel, we wanted to bring that same magic formula to the world of textures in a way that hasn't been done before. You see, the purpose of Infinite Texture Panel is to inspire creativity in a completely new way. Textures can be used to enhance the feel or mood of an image no matter what you shoot. So whether it's portraits or landscapes, it can definitely add some magic to your work. Or they can add another layer of depth through compositing. The panel also gives you the ability to access tens of thousands of gallery quality textures. And the best part is the database will continually grow over time. We utilize clean design and artificial intelligence to organize all these files in a logical way that encourages you to explore and have fun again with the creative process. Trying to manage and sort through this many textures manually will be very messy and time consuming. So let's just jump into it and show you how this panel and interface works. Infinite Texture Panel is designed in such an efficient and clean way where you can access all the tens of thousands of gallery quality textures on the back end seamlessly and efficiently. It's designed to make you explore and enhance your creativity. So let me give you an overview of the panel, the buttons where everything's laid out, and then later on, we're gonna go in and show you some, uh, some images that were designed with Infinite Color Panel and how I use it in a layer stack. So for instance, if I have these categories here, lights, overlays, particles, and elements, and I wanna use lights, I'll click on lights, I'll click on create, and it's gonna generate, or it's gonna place, I should say, the image from the server under that category in the image. So maybe if I don't want this and I want something completely different, I'm gonna come down here to randomness. And what that does is if I have my randomness set to 100, it's going to actually find another texture that's completely different or at random than the one that's already generated right now. So I'm gonna click on create. You can see this is completely different from the previous image, but also very, very cool, I should say. And if I want something similar to that, I can come down to zero and then hit create. And I can also do something very similar like that. It has a green flare and a different kind of shape. So next, if I want to have something that's not as random, but kind of similar, I'll do it again. And then it comes up with something with green elements, but still overall white. And then I'll just keep on hitting create till I find something that I like. So that's how this random slider works in conjunction with categories and the create function. Another important fact to note is that by default, it comes with a black background and they're shot that way because you can easily blend it into the photograph without with minimal masking. And um, Stefan and the team did such a great job capturing these high res textures in a way that really works with the photograph. You can see here when I change the blend mode back to normal, you see it's shot on a black background or and then if I change the blend mode to whatever I like, lighten, screen, whatever, it uh, gives you the ability to blend in the original image with the texture seamlessly and very, very realistically. Next, if I want to have another, say, category, I'll click on that category. I'll start at 100 or 0 if I want something like that, and I'll click on Create. And then now it has um, something in that category that was similar to what was in the previous category, which is very cool. Um, and these particles here add such great mood to the image and as I mentioned, when we go over how to apply and implement these textures, um, especially on our website later with additional videos and content, you'll get to see the full power of how we can utilize all of these. Next, if I want something completely random again, I'll go back to 100, click on Create, and then it'll come up with something a little bit different like this. And there's so many of them. They're, it's really fun, and I'm sure you can see that I'm having fun playing with this and showing you guys how to use it. And then say that you want a higher resolution version of whatever you generated, since most of whatever you generate now is in low res, you simply click on high res. And the reason why we did it this way is because that it just makes sorting much easier. It generates it much easier and faster. And so now you can see this high resolution texture and it is very high res. So you can get all the detail that you're looking for. Now that we've gone over that, we also have overlays or all, and all just cycles through all of the categories. And then my next favorite thing is gonna be the AI match, which is artificial intelligence match feature, which we'll talk about next. And there we can actually see how we use AI with the infinite texture panel to continue our creativity. Now let's take a look at the artificial intelligence match, short for AI match. And 
what it does is effectively a couple of things. Number one, let's say you have a particular texture that you like to use all the time, but you want something similar to that because you're tired of that same texture and you want some variety, something similar to it or something different, but within the same realm. The second thing is with infinite texture panel, you get full commercial usage from this. So in case you want to use it for commercial purposes, you can. And as you know, most textures don't have that privilege. So the purpose of AI match is you can grab a texture that you like, Click on AI match to generate something that's similar to it or exactly the same in the sense of color and shape. And then you have a texture that you could use for your commercial work. And so for instance, I've went to Unsplash and got this image from Sharon McCutcheon. And what we're gonna do here is you're gonna use it as a reference file, click on AI match. And once I click on it, it's gonna take a little bit of time, but once it renders, once it grabs the image from the server, um, it's gonna be very similar as close as possible using artificial intelligence. So watch this. So now that I've clicked on it, what's gonna happen is it's gonna take a little bit of time and now it's gonna place an image that is similar as possible. And there we go. I'm gonna click on, instead of screen, I'm gonna click on normal. And then it found some bokeh, which is very similar in color and shape based on the images we have in the back end and the full database. Then if I wanna create something which is um, similar to it and want some variety, I'll click on all just to make sure that whatever it does generate, it pulls from every single category. The random is set to zero. I'll hit create. And then it finds other bokeh shapes like that. And then if I want to download the high res, you click on high res. And again, it pulls the high res image from the server itself. And there you go. Now that's how you use AI Mesh. You use a reference file to pull whatever you want. And you could do so many different things, not just overlays, but different shapes and objects like rust and things like that too. The second feature of AI Match, and one that I think just blew me away completely, was the ability to actually draw something and have it find the texture that most resembles whatever you drew. So for instance, I'm gonna go through a few different um, examples of what I did and what it recommended um, it looked like, and it was so fascinating. So for instance, over here, I use a regular black um, canvas. I used um, shift and delete on my keyboard and using a blank layer, it fills it in with completely black. And the reason for that is now that I have a black background and a white brush or any specific color or shape, it's going to use AI match um, to find the specific texture. And for this one, when I did that and I hit AI match, it found this. This was so remarkable to me because it had to sort through thousands of images in order to find what it thought resembled it closely. And it's color sensitive, light sensitive, and shape sensitive too. So here's what I mean. I next decided to draw blue streaks and then use AI match and it generated blue streaks. Um, or I should say it placed the blue streak image onto my file. And it's pulling images from the back end in the server. So it's limited to whatever photo it has. And it's not limited at all because there's so many of them. The next one was fire, which is a horrible idea. And you'll see what I mean when I say it recommends and looks for shapes. So you can see there's fire shape. And I transformed um, and placed it where it was very similar to the shape. So you can check it out. The next one was pretzel. And it found a pretzel. The next one was fire, or I should say flare, and then it found an image of a flare, which was really spectacular actually, because the other benefit is once it finds that specific texture, you can simply click on zero randomness and hit create, and it's going to find whatever is similar to that one in case you want some diversity. The next one was I use the standard brushes within Photoshop CC 2019, and what I did was I used this dry media brush here, and I simply started painting around on black. And then when I hit AI match, it found glass. So it finds whatever you th it thinks is similar to the shape of the, the patterns and the colors that you're brushing. And now I did some white circles and it found some bokeh. 
and then you can keep on adjusting it accordingly. But you can see the shape of the bokeh is similar, and it, it's the cluster is similar. It's just so fascinating. So I encourage everyone to jump in and play with this. It's free to try as well, so if, in case you are interested in seeing how it works, you can jump in and play with it. And again, once it generates and places, as I said, it places an image from the back end, simply click on high res, and it pulls up with a high res version of whatever you, gener whatever you create. I want to show you a couple of examples of how we could use Infinite Texture Panel in a working image and showing you what it could do to the mood of that picture. So for instance, I have this image that Stefan shot, which I really love. And I want to show you what I did in order to elevate the mood of this particular file. Now, obviously, I really love the colorful nature of it. I love the lights. It's beautiful. Um, the model Ophelia did a really great job. And let's say that I actually wanted to add some depth. So what I started doing was with the panel itself here, um, I hit create using the lights and I generated this pattern here and by default it's always set to 100 so that was pretty cool I liked it I adjusted the position of it to fill in the frame and then I brought the opacity down to around 14 percent then I decided to add another one but this time I put my randomness slider not at zero so it was going to be the same but I brought it a little bit down like this and what it did was it generated this guy here on another layer because I added another layer and then hit create again and then now it created a beautiful colorful book as you can see from the thumbnail it did the same thing again with screen which is set to default and opacity at 18 percent so the colors now blend in the background similarly to how the iridescent color of the of the, um, of the wardrobe is Next, I added some more, doing the same kind of thing and move the position around so it fills in the bottom half. Because it's set to screen, I changed the blend mode to different blend modes to see how they would interact with the image and played around that way. It really inspired me to see how the colors interacted. And then finally, I added some um, particles in which complements and adds and fills in the frame over this side just to bring more grit to it. And then I made sure that everyone was set to high res and I clicked on it and that way I got the high res detail so I'm not missing out on anything. The next one we have here is another one by Stefan and this one was a little bit more simpler but very impactful nonetheless. The first one I created was under the lights category. I brought my opacity down from 100 which is too bright um, down to say about like 14 or so just say adding those light ray elements popping in the frame which is really cool and then I added a, a overlay which was this really nice red texture. Let's see here. I'm going to set it to normal so you can see what it looked like. And then I added a blend mode, which you can see it's only impacting the highlights and midtones. And if you're not familiar with blend modes, I'd, in, very interesting to look up. Um, but it shows you that this was the original overlay, this nice gradient. And then I just um, changed it here in the blending options. And just like that, I'm able to change and interact with these textures in ways that are just really inspiring. And it does inspire creativity. And that's the whole point of Infinite Texture Panel, to be able to use this panel and all the textures that it provides in a way that inspires you to totally go out of your element and come up with something brand new, whether it's for the mood of the image or just an overall different composite. And I'm excited to see what you guys create. It's very exciting. And if you want to learn more and try out a free trial of Infinite Texture Panel, please go to infinitetexturepanel.com and we'll be adding a lot more videos and content as well as um, our Facebook group and our Instagram page as well.